So I think we can start. How many people do we have? Oh, quite a few. So hi, everyone. So first of all, I wish you a happy new year, um, 2021. Um, well, we, we, we probably have a happy new year um, for a few interim meetings because it's a new year uh, in every part of the world. Um, this is, so this is our first meeting, um, our January meeting for um, the ACE working group. Um, I'm showing the not well, so uh, please take the time to read this slide. And if you have any question, please come back to me or um, raise your question. Um, before we start, um, I'd like to know if there is anyone willing to be the Jabba scribe. I think Francesca is doing it. I'm also asking for a minute ticker. Um, we can also um, collaborate for that. So we can have two. Anyone volunteering? The Kodim link, oh, yeah, the Kodim link, I, I think I sent it in the chat, but I, I can resend it. It's Yeah, I can help out with the minutes. Okay, thank you, Garan. Okay, good. So um, anyone uh, has any comment before we start? No? So let's start with the working group status. So we had a charter. Uh, the, the charter is um, um, being reviewed um, and is uh, currently presented at the ISG. So uh, probably this time uh, as I am speaking. Um, then it is expected that there is um, an external review. So it's the regular process. Uh, it's nothing uh, more. But um, at the end, um, the, the charter is being to, to be um, published or approved in any sort um, no, no, no sooner than the uh, beginning of February. So this is um, one of the reasons we started some conditional uh, calls for adoption so that we're not waiting uh, too much. Um, and this is why you may have uh, seen on the mailing list the call for adoption for draft um, uh, with CMPV2 uh, over co-op. Um, so where we are with that working group, so we have the RFCQ uh, in which we, st we still have um, um, the draft on uh, Coop East, um, I, I, as far as I remember, is waiting for um, a DTLS number. Um, so I don't know how it's uh, how long it's going to take, but um, I suppose um, we're seeing the end of the tunnel. But uh, did I notice uh, um, Shen on the um, on the? I mean, the, the, the Shen Turner. Do you want to say something on that? For the DTLS? Um, hopefully you can hear me. Uh, yeah. I think we're in the process of still trying to get some um, final changes tweaked in there, but it, the document is basically ready to go. So we just have to get it to the ISG. Yeah. OK, so that's, um, it's, it's uh, as I mentioned, it's the, we see the end coming, so not a problem. Um, AD review, so we have uh, some documents that are waiting for um, another document that is in the working group queue. Uh, um, so, so that's the three first documents. So as soon as we got um, the OS core profile um, done, all those are, are going to be sent to the ISG. 
and we have a new document that's been sent um, in the next um, in the latest months, which is the MQTT TLS profile. So that's uh, the one I'm considering that is in the, the real in the real bands queue. And then we have a working group queue. Uh, where we do have um, a few documents that are staying. So the, um, the OSCO profile um, um, is, uh, well, we had a, a latest review. And um, so this document has I've made some back and forth between um, uh, um, uh, the working group and the revision. So I think we are reaching the last step now. Um, and um, as soon as the... Um, the next version is going to be published. My expectation is that um, it's going to be sent to the AD and then um, in a very short time sent to the ASG because, um, I mean, um, it's not a new document for uh, Ben. Ben has already reviewed it, yes. Yeah. So I, I don't know, Francesca, if you want to say a few more words on that document. Just that I've uh, just replied to your um, to your email just before this meeting, so hopefully, if you agree with uh, my my answers, and I, I was happy to see that it was mostly clarifications and things like that, so I don't think it will take a long time to to update. It's on high on the priority list, so as soon as you give me the the okay. Um, I might actually start doing the changes and, and so you can just okay the pull request if you prefer. Um, oh, yeah, I, I will have to, to look at your email. I saw you sent me an email, but um, I haven't had time to, to no, look no, at it. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, I will do that uh, probably right after the meeting. So if you if you don't see any problem, I I don't see why I should see any problem. So <laughs> yeah, so that there is not a lot of changes, and hopefully, if you agree, there is uh, some some clarifications, but uh, also some other clarification. Um, I have uh, I um I I want I want to keep for discussion with the RFC editor as neither of us is English native speakers. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's, uh, I don't really have, you know, like I, I don't really know. So uh, yeah, yeah, that's, uh... yeah. <laughs> but that's it. Otherwise I think we're, we're like with the next version, we should be ready to move all the documents. Okay. Forward. So that's uh, great news. Um, yeah. So probably my expectation is that way before the next meet, interim meeting, uh, that's going to be um, uh, out of the queue. Then the second document um, uh, we have is the um, ACA AIF. So this one is going to be discussed a little bit more uh, in detail um, during this meeting. And we have the pub sub profile that also have been updated. And uh, we have a group com or related drafts. So um, I also updated the milestones. So my expectation is that um, we get focused on, um, on on documents and that we do move them forward on a regular basis. Um, so I have plain um, uh, I interim meetings, um, uh, one per month, because, um, uh, I mean, I, I think we were quite successful with those. Um, these meetings are not expected to replace the mailing list. So, I mean, um, please don't wait for the meetings. Uh, to discuss um, some of the things. And um, so, I mean, uh, most of the discussions should be handled um, on the mailing list and the interim meetings should be really there to fix things that have not been fixed on the mailing list. Um, okay, so now let's start with the, um, the first uh, draft or uh, presentation we would like to hear about, which is the AIF. Um, I don't know if, um, uh, Karsten, maybe you want to... Oh, Daniel. Yeah? So, sorry for interrupting. Uh, there is actually uh, a very final PR in, uh, in the ACE framework, um, which appeared uh, as a result of, of a comment from one of the implementers of, of the OSCORE profile. 
I just want to point out that on the GitHub, um, there is a PR, I made that PR. Um, it's basically just a formulation to address one possible uh, misunderstanding of the term overwrite, which is used in, in, uh, in the framework to describe the process when you uh, update the access rights. So there is a okay. PR, and uh, um, I think that would be great if we could consider that before pushing the uh, drafts to, uh, yeah, on in the process. So you are talking about um, this yes. one? Yes. Okay. Correct. Okay. So that's something we need to look at okay. uh, more closely. Um, is that something Ben is involved in it, or no? It's it's just a wording. Uh, it's um, so there was a comment from Marco, and it was taken to the authors, and I was I made this small PR, which is basically just explaining that we are not strictly overwriting. I mean, this is framework is document is is not addressing exactly how this process is going when you update um, the access rights. So the overwrite is not physically an overwrite of of the old. I mean, it's not like uh, like it's implemented as as deleting the old and uh, replacing it with the new it's it's actually um a little bit more um i mean there are some information that you might lose in that process so that that's not the intent but the term overwrite is is so therefore replaced with the superseding was a considered alternative right superseded was the word it's just a wording thing okay and now i remember uh the same kind of rephrasing for consistency uh would happen then in some sentences of the oscar profile but just to catch exactly with that okay so um is, is that something that um may, maybe needs to be raised on the mailing list so that everyone agrees on that um sure i can send an email yeah, I think that's the best way to to, uh, to handle that. And uh, of course, I'm going to have a look at this um, and uh, we'll uh, tell Ben for that also. OK, thanks. Thanks for bringing this. OK, so um, yeah, so for IIF, so currently the document is at least uh, mentioned by two documents, which is the MQTT and the GroupCom. Um, so from a discussion I had with Karsten, um, I mean, we sort of um, went through uh, remaining points. So, um, I mean, filling the templates, um, uh, finalizing security and introduction sections. Um, and then um, some um, comments that have been uh, provided um, earlier, um, positioning, uh, AIF toward um, non-constrained uh, mechanisms. Um, so uh, my thoughts are that maybe the introduction would be um, the place to, to to mention that. I think uh, it's um, or originally from a comment from Ben. Um, from Jim, um, he also mentioned um, that a resource that has been created um, may be granted uh, some specific uh, access right. Um, this should not impact the, um, it does not expect that it impacts the for format being described, but um, it might something that we uh, mentioned. So basically what we would like to hear is from the people that are referencing uh, this document, if they have any, any concerns, um, and if there are anything they're willing to see in the, in the next version. And um, I will leave probably the floor to, to, to Kasten to see if he wants to add anything. Yeah, so um, the, the uh, draft formally isn't complete. Uh, we still have to fill in the, the uh, media type registration template and uh, we have to write a security consideration section. So that, that's the, the minimum amount of work uh, that needs to be done. And uh, then we have a number of, of comments that are not like do this, do that, but are, are just raising interesting, partly philosophical questions. So we, we are a bit... Uh, at, at leisure to uh, 
uh, decide whether we actually want to do something or, or don't want something. Um, and of course, there are the comments of uh, from the people who actually are using uh, this. And right now, I'm, I'm as you said, I'm very interested in <clears throat> hearing if, if there's anything else that needs to be done at this point in time. So has anyone any comment on that? Anyone um, willing to review the document? That would be interesting. So my guess is that maybe Karsten can update the document and then we can um, um, have some people reviewing. I would like to have people committing for the review. Um, it's a very short document, so I mean, uh, don't be afraid, uh, but it would be good that, I mean, once it's being published, we have the review um, in the few coming days uh, after the publication. So, I can ask um, Signem for, for um, as a co-author of the MQTT draft. Um, I'm wondering if, um, any of the group com uh, draft uh, could volunteer for reviewing the next version of that draft. Uh, Marco here, I can have a look at it. And by the way, it's already used also in SK group com score where um, a, a separate AF data model is defined, in fact. And I, I can anticipate the same will happen with yet another data model for um, the GM admin uh, document when we started to think of how to use uh, AAF uh, in a new way for that. So uh, I'm not sure we are going to use the uh, data model already defined uh, in the document, meaning that the basic uh, REST model and the dynamic REST model, but I can still have a look at it. And, and maybe I can come up with, with comments if, uh, I notice anything uh, when using it uh, in those other drafts. Okay, so that's, so that's very good. Thank you, um, Marco. I will I will ask Signem also to check that, um, and uh, so I will contact her and um, ask her for that. So um, yeah, so. We, we should expect a new version um, in the next coming weeks. So that's probably beginning of February. That's my guess. Is that, am I cor correct with that, Karsten? Is that uh, okay? I'm striking to do it uh, this month. <laughs> okay, perfect. And so my expectation is that as soon as we got uh, those review, we start a working group last call on that. Yeah, if, if the review uncovers anything, and then of course we should have another yeah. new version yeah, yeah. in the, the working class call. Yes. Are they? That's um, really my lack of my lack of expertise. Um, but I'm wondering if there are any other working group that should be involved. Uh, you think in the review or that we? When when we have done our review, we probably want to include HTTP this. Okay. Or maybe the the new what's it called the the um, do interesting things with HTTP that Mark Nottingham is interested in working group. Um, forget what it's called. So during the working group last call, I guess. Yes. HTTP bis. Okay. Is that HTTP puppy? Yes. Okay. Good. Yeah. So I think that's nice to to, to have those. Um, Perhaps a profile. So um, I'm wondering if um, Francesca, do you have any any things to mention? Any you are expecting? I, um... I I can give a short status update. Is that after New Year? Um, well, I have a, as you might have seen, I've. Uh, uh, started uh, contact with uh, Sigdem, who unfortunately is not on the call today, um, but she has started to um, think about the MQTT part of the PubSub profile. 
and um, she had some comments already, so we need to sit down and, and think about, about it. Uh, in particular, the first comment she had was about um, that she doesn't think that the two authorization servers, which are now defined, AS1 and AS2, uh, should be defined. So uh, should be separated. So she she thinks that they should be one entity. So that would be a, a, a one bigger change. And yeah, and there is a lot of more comments that come from the uh, think about MQTT. So this is not. So we just I just resubmitted it just for um, keeping it alive. But yeah. uh, for, for me, this wasn't in my priority list so far. So um, now we can start picking up the, the pace again, but um, probably not before, for me at least, not before the OSCO profile is done. Yeah, OK. So um, I, I, I don't really know what to tell you about the next update. Um, Mm -hmm. But it's not uh, definitely not uh, for uh, for two weeks or something like that. Yeah, I, I would say um, the the profile should be done by in the next two weeks. But um, I think, uh, especially because there is a, um, a I mean, um, uh, collaborations between. Uh, you and Signen uh, in that document, um, I think it would be good to uh, to be quite reactive um, so that the working group can also... Yeah, uh, its, actually, uh, it would have been good to have this document move forward with the MQTT uh, um, document as well, but that one is more advanced. So we kind of like, I'm already late on this, so I don't know if we can pick up and uh, if we can't, then... Um, I am not really sure. I will, uh, I will check with SIG them and, and we will try to have a better update for next. Uh... Oh, can you hear me? I yeah, 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 uh... sure. Okay, I have a better update for next interim. Okay, so that's good. Um, and um, I mean, a working group, please. Um, um, I mean, um, Feel free to, to provide think, feedback. I, and, um, yeah, I don't think it's time uh, for feedback yet. Uh, we, we will, uh, um, for next okay. update, then maybe. Yeah. Okay, right. Yeah, feedback's on the document, but um, I saw an email where some points have been raised. So if anyone has any 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 comments on that, that's that was my. Um, um, yes, of course. I, yeah, I those, those yeah. were the, the points that SIGDEM brought up, and uh, we will also discuss, and um, anybody is obviously welcome to provide feedback about those. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you. So I guess for the next meeting, we will have um, a, a thorough discussion um, on this uh, draft. That's my how, how I see the thing. To confirm mm, the, so. the, yeah, okay, <laughs> okay. So um, good. Well, it, it's nice that this work is moving on. So thank you. Um, I, group comes. So I think Marco got two presentations. Marco and Francesca. Yes, Marco is going to present today about both. Okay. Here it is. Yeah, thank you, Daniel. We resume to work on this. Uh, this is just a collection of um, open points we have compiled, and one is actually from the November ITF meeting, plus more we talked about um, in the meanwhile. Uh, so next slide, please. Yeah, the, the conclusion about this open point in November was to think more about it. So we are, we are still at, at the same point, in fact. But just to, to refresh our memory, um, it's about the encoding of, of scope uh, in the token itself. And of course, the way it is used in the message uh, exchange between uh, client and authorization server. But so far, we, we have assumed that the KDC is running just one application, or in this particular context, one application profile uh, of ACE. 
uh, but it, it may just as well run uh, multiple applications, not at all related to each other um, at the same time. Uh, and you can think of this uh, even as a much more general point in ASA applied to any resource server, so not necessarily a KDC. Uh, point is, a client posts uh, a token where scope is encoded as a by string. So at, at that particular point, uh, what should the KDC or more in general, the resource server do? Meaning, uh, how is it supposed to know exactly how to parse uh, scope uh, according to uh, to which format. So for the context of, of this work, well, uh, we know that, for instance, in some profile, we have that uh, as a similar array uh, indicating group uh, on one side and roles on the other side. But you may have other formats uh, for other application. But right when the token is posted, you don't know, and, and you need a hint. Uh, so uh, maybe a not too orthodox hint that I'm actually using uh, in, in my group manager implementation is um, is the audience uh, claim of the token uh, that I actually associate to a service like uh, a group manager for group of score, for instance. And um, well, that would work, but probably we can do better uh, to be also more general uh, than this. Uh, next slide, please. So we thought of and proposed in November two possible approaches that, again, all in all are about giving a hint on uh, how the scope should be uh, should be parsed. And one is prefixing the scope with uh, one byte, uh, whose value can be, uh, in fact, the hint. And this has, of course, to be agreed between the, the resource server and the authorization server, for instance, upon uh, resource server registration time. And, and of course, if there are multiple resource servers around uh, running that same set of applications, for instance, well, they all need to sync on, on a common value associated to a format uh, during that registration phase. Um, there's another way that, well, it, it's fundamentally about prefixing a hint, uh, but it uses the actual um, seaboard tags. So since the one by seaboard tags are pretty uh, delicate to consider for registration, uh, they will probably mean already uh, uh, a bit more overhead, uh, though compared to the overall size of the token, uh, it's probably acceptable. And, and probably a, an overall two byte zebra tag um, would be sufficient. Uh, the problem then becomes also uh, how, how well this scales overall in, in the ecosystem and uh, uh, well, what makes an application entitled to to claim for a new uh, tag value to register? Th these are just open questions. Uh, we didn't come to an actual decision other, other than a tentative proposal to uh, have an appendix uh, describing both approaches uh, and how they could be used. Uh, otherwise, what exactly to do and what how much defined in this document or somewhere else uh, is still an open point, in fact. Uh, and there I added some comments uh, we raised in November from, from Ben and Karsten. Uh, but we can discuss this more today, I think. Right. So, um, well, the question is whether we pick one solution or do we keep both? No, we, we would have to pick one yeah um, okay. <laughs> or or i mean we could also as marco said he has kind of um f fixed it right now in his implementation with a uh with a, a tweak that is um the audience, the audience. Or, yeah the audience but it would be better to have a cleaner solution at least in my opinion and uh, while you were talking marco i thought about uh, what about if we, re if we register one seaboard tag, not one per each possible form of scope, just one seaboard tag, and then in our iskiru.com document, we register a new IANA registry um, um, that would contain, so basically the prefix or whatever um, that is going to be called, that, that tells uh, what the format of scope is. Is and so you would use both the seaboard tag and then another registry to indicate the actual format. The seaboard tag is only telling you 
this is a format of like this is a scope prefixed by the value that you find in this registry so that we don't need to re like register um several different tags one for each format you uh, in Cbor. so maybe then we could even use um a one byte Cbor tag not sure about that we'll see but it, that will be just one Cbor tag that we would register so the the tag what do you think of that the, the tag indicates there's um, an, a format integer following, and then there's scope. So I, I think maybe Wi-Fi is not great today, but can you repeat, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, so the tag would indicate uh, there's an integer format following, and after that, scope. Um, so the tag would indicate that... Um, the, the, the following item is a prefixed scope. So even though <laughs> Daniel said, oh, are we picking one or both? Actually, the, the solution would be both both options. <laughs> so it's good and it would work. I'm just thinking uh, that probably makes scope a Cbor sequence, right? Uh, uh, the format number. Well, the the scope itself is whatever scope is defined to be. It's the the format, you know. Uh, and then you have a prefix, and then sure you can have either a sequence, a Cbor sequence with the prefix, and then the actual scope, or you could have. I haven't thought about this is details. I haven't thought about that, but. Uh, yeah, let's assume it for sequence, so you save one byte to avoid the array. Mm, we still have to go for a byte string as a final thing anyway, possibly tag, sure. So probably, uh, I don't know if the byte string should drop the sequence then, <laughs> rather than the array. But so the main inconvenience, as far as I see of the tag, is that we are adding one byte. Um, the main inconvenience is that it's it's supposed like most likely longer than just the prefix, but the prefix on the other hand would have to be agreed between the resource server and the AS uh, beforehand. But yeah. what I was saying is that you, we can add an Ayana registry for the prefix, and the Cbor tag will just um, indicate that what follows is prefix plus scope. It doesn't need to indicate the exact encoding of scope. And in that case, we, yeah, it, it's, there is still one more, but it's still longer than just the prefix. Um, and also, if we do it this way, we don't mandate that this is used. You could still do the prefix by itself if, they, uh, if the RS and AS agree beforehand. Yeah. Before, because one of the question um, I would have is, um, it's it's. I mean, um, it's not something where you're sending uh, every packet. So it's just when when we're setting the the system. Yeah. So I don't see, but maybe I'm wrong. A one byte as a problem. And so. No, I I agree with that. Yes. I would be inclined to rather than looking for optimization to have something that is uh, architect architecturally clean. Yeah, I agree with that. On the other hand, we don't want to register a ton of Cbor. I mean, I don't know how many formats of scopes we will be looking at, but I that was one another thing that uh, we don't want to register one Cbor tag for each for a format of scope and combining these two would solve that problem. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and actually we can have up to 56 or so possible formats uh, encodable in one byte of prefix. If we play around with positive and negative values. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, I, I was more struggling with the actual encoding. Uh, I think that the, the practical by string that scope has to be uh, will have to wrap a sequence composed of we the prefix and the array. 
Sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I believe that uh, if we do that and it looks fine, uh, the practical byte string that has to be uh, sent on the wire as scope will have to wrap not the array anymore, but the sequence with the format number and the array. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, it depends how you, yeah, because so, so we would have a tagged byte string, mm -hmm. and the tag, tagged byte string or tagged CBOR sequence. Um, yeah, I think we need to think a little bit more how that is actually encoded. Uh, just thinking that uh, just as per uh, scope is either text string or byte string, so we need to leave with it. Yeah, but so you're saying that the seaboard tag plus like what is after seaboard tag is supposed to be a byte string or what? Uh, we still have to tag exactly a byte string. Um, I'm saying the value of the byte string wouldn't be anymore an array, but it has to be a sequence um, integer for uh, the format and then the array. Why does it have to? You need to produce a by string to tag in the end. Yeah, you you can wrap it right. I mean, you can. Uh... So, um, I I have the impression that um, I, I'm not sure everyone is um, um, following the discussion. So maybe what I would suggest is that you you take the design you think is the best one, and. Um, uh, the important thing is, is that we sort of agree that uh, uh, fighting and having something very complex for one byte maybe n n not really worth it. Um, and I think we can take that um, from that. So just propose something you think is the best solution. And, uh, and um, I mean, having something clean and that is implementable would be prioritize over um sounds good okay that's um yeah i think that's good the meta thank you the meta question is should all this be defined register included uh, if we go for that uh, exactly in this document because it's a pretty general point actually <laughs> uh, this would be valid for the ace framework as well is it a problem it is in that document and we oh, no well uh, it's fine just to give it more visibility because it, it in principle it affects any application using ace i think okay perfect so just not to risk that it goes on the radar <laughs> yeah i would it be a a, a huge thing oh, um I don't have any opinion um, on that. I'm usually trying to reduce the number of documents, but uh, um, I'm happy. I'm mean, happy anyway. Um, 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 but I, I, yeah, I understand your point. Uh, maybe any anyone has an, an opinion on that. I mean, it would be good if the framework. Uh, that I mean, even if the framework doesn't define this, but if it had a reference to something like that, it would be good because it would make the implementer aware that this is possible and there is a solution existing. And then where where this is defined, either uh, in a document or in a separate, very short two-page document, um, it's kind of the same. But I don't know. It, it's a shame that Ludwig is not here either, <laughs> because he would have had a very strong opinion about. Uh, I don't know if, it, if maybe you are. Do you have an opinion about adding intents referencing something like this, saying that this is a is a something that can be implemented or not? Um, no, I don't have a strong opinion here. I think uh, I, I, my view would be that um, 
we don't have so many documents. So if it's some, some, something we realized uh, while designing in a group com, um, I mean, um, I mean, I mean, um, documents that are coming after will reference the group com, and then it's going to be in the mainstream. Um, I think it's probably the way to do rather than coming back all the time to um, the framework. So I, that's what I. Yeah, the, the, the only reason why we brought this up is that this is a more general thing that has basically it, it, it's ap applicable also for uh, applications that are not based, like they are not groups. So it would be true for the Oscar profile or whatever other application of, of the framework. That's just why we're saying the yeah. so general that if you know, if, if someone else is implementing something else and they're not aware that uh, this is that they will not know to use it, maybe if we move it out of the ASCII group com and, and we make a, a separate document, then it's it's easier to find. I don't know. It's just, but we can start with a proposal and then um, we can take back the discussion on if we should have it separate or in this document or something else. Yeah, I, I I would be more in favor of um, focusing on the on that document, and um, since we don't have a, a thousands um, applications or um, related to the framework, I think it makes sense to to have this being specified in one application. Or um, I'm not to worry about that, but maybe maybe I'm wrong. Um, so if anyone got a strong feeling on that, it would be good to. To raise that maybe on the mailing list, or Ludwig can um, state it's mine. Um, but uh, if, we, if we're not hearing from anyone, I would suggest we focus on the key, the group come. Okay. Okay, we start here for the next iteration anyway. <laughs> yeah. Good. Okay, um, that was it for this point. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the toughest one, I have to say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So we can move to the next slide. Oh, yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, we just noted while going through the many requirements that uh, the, the document refines that, of course, a, a particular profile um, a, as an instance of this document um, should also specify for a certain role that the group member can have. Uh, practically what, what kind of operations uh, that role um, enables the group member to do. And in the original text on top, we are referring as associated to operations, exactly co-op methods. And that's maybe too specific, for instance, if practically co-op is not used uh, to communicate in the group, think of MQTT already, uh, meaning that even REST methods may be still too specific. Um, so until a few hours ago, we had a more complicated uh, rephrasing as alternative, but Francesca noticed it is probably good enough to just replace uh, that is with uh, EG. Uh, so essentially mentioning COP methods just as a possible uh, example of operations intended to be uh, associated to roles. Um, so what was more complicated uh, might be just about this easy way to clarify. Make sense. To all. Uh, if everyone is happy with that, I'm fine. Um, I, I I think also that if you if you have one reference, which is the co-op methods, anything that uh, I mean um, is somehow associated to that. I mean, it's uh, we have a transity relation between those, so um, mm. I think it's fine. Great, thank you. Okay, that ended up easy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <One place. laughs> Thank you. Um, right, I, I also need to look up a bit here. Oh, yeah. Um, if you remember, there are uh, sub resources uh, at the KDC, one uh, for each group member. And I think Christian, in one of his review, noticed um, and made us remove the possible observation of, of that node sub resource from the associated node because there was apparent 
no reason to, to do that. Um, actually, there might be a reason uh, that can be uh, an advantage for the group member uh, for observing this uh, dedicated resource. Um, the KDC may decide for, for some reason to um, uh, kick out from the group uh, that node. And right now we are defining as a possible way to uh, inform the group member about the eviction um, a national request uh, from the KDC to the node using a path possibly provided um, upon joining uh, by the group member. Uh, but after having uh, evicted uh, a group member from the group, the KDC is also supposed to uh, delete altogether this associated sub-resource. So if that group member was observing that sub-resource, uh, following the deletion of that resource, uh, the KDC would have to send, as per observe, uh, a 401 uh, notification response. And that would serve an, as an automatic way of notification, oh, I, I have uh, I have evicted you uh, from the group. So that would be uh, actually motivation why it, it can make sense uh, to take advantage of this for a group member to observe possibly uh, that resource, to get notifications uh, about being uh, evicted from the group. Make sense? Yeah, to know when it's... Yeah, go ahead. Was that Karsten, I think? Yeah, I just said it makes a lot of sense. Having all these callback uh, URIs being exchanged, that, that's the HTTP, HTTP way of doing things because they don't have anything else. Uh, we, we do have observation and uh, as you mentioned, it, it just uh, falls together neatly. So let's just use what we have. Thank you, Karsten. Okay. Uh, next slide, because uh, here it comes the catch <laughs> that requires a, a bit of uh, addressing. Uh, at the KDC, there's um, there's another common resource uh, to, to the whole group, so to the whole members, where they join, and that once members, they can be interested in observing as well uh, to get updated key material in, in case it changes. So if we do what, what I said in the previous slide, uh, the, the group member would end up observing uh, both resources. And because of the way they, they represent their content, the, the two notifications would be very similar uh, in content uh, in, in case the, the key material changes in the group. And that's just uh, redundant. Um, so using the possible observation of the node dedicated resource, like I said in the previous slide, uh, a, a trick to avoid that can be that uh, the group member observes uh, its node sub resource using also the no response, uh, stating uh, it's not interested in successful responses. Uh, so what we really want to get as a possible notification is only uh, the one following the deletion uh, of the node resource because of the, the eviction uh, from the group. Uh, so then we'll have what we want. Uh, avoiding any redundant overhead uh, as an almost duplicate uh, information received. That would work, wouldn't it? Hope you can hear me. <laughs> yeah, you didn't hear me say ouch. Ouch? <laughs> no. <laughs> But I didn't intend this to, to be a comment uh, stopping you from doing that. Now, okay. yeah, that, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Another thing would be to just um, um, say that that this is like the consideration that this happens <laughs> if, if nodes observe both resources um, and then allow applications to decide if they want to observe both these users at the same time, because they could only just observe one and then, um, yeah, uh, not observe both. 
Yeah, the thing is that the group member is most likely uh, observing the, the main common group resource to get updated uh, key material. So it, it has no reason to observe this one too, but they will be convenient to be notified about eviction. But if it does that, it, you get kind of double information unless... I mean, if it, if it was to observe only this one and not the general group group one... Uh, they will be probably uh, fine from a selfish point of view of that group member, but uh, uh, I, I think the KDC for what is worth would have much more uh, observational state uh, to keep looking at because the common group resource is common instead. But I mean, is that... <sighs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's a problem. <laughs> No, no. It, I, it, I haven't implemented co-op, so I don't know how how big of a problem that is to have several. This is an optimization. Uh, the member can still observe both without no response, and well, it, it will probably get many redundant notifications, and well, so be it. So, Carsten, could you expand on the ouch, <laughs> please? <laughs> Like what? What was the the reason for that reaction? Yeah, I think we 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 don't have strong support for observing with no response yet in libraries. So that would be something that people would have to add to to the generic co-op implementations. Yeah, I mean, it's, so the it's, way. Yeah, I see, I see your point, and the way that I'm seeing this is, is that we need to add considerations about. Uh, this, this uh, situation, and we need to give possible solutions. But I wouldn't say that any of this is mandatory to implement. No, no. Uh. So what I'm saying is, that if the libraries don't have, like this is an optimization, if the libraries don't have the way to do this, they can solve it by, you know, only observing one of these two resources or accepting that they get double observations or notifications. I agree with Francesca here. I think this is uh, this is an, an interesting tweak, but it's 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 I mean and, and it should be handled like that in the specification, like like a note or a remark or, or saying yeah. in, in, in case this is uh, everything is supported, this is how you can optimize things. But it's not it's not central actually. I agree. Okay, let uh, reassure you, Carsten. I agree. Good. Great. Thanks. So next one. Um, great. Um, still thinking of that same uh, node sub resource, the group member can send a put request uh, to request new individual key material, uh, practically in the group of score case, uh, a new sender ID. Uh, the payload uh, should be empty. So right now we are not saying what the KDC should do if it receives a request with non-empty payload. Should it just mm, pretend not to see that and continue or actually return a bad request? Any opinion on this? Ignoring means that you never can extend it. So if, if you do, do an extension of the protocol later where there is a non-empty payload, um, the, the KDC would just ignore it and you would never know whether the KDC actually has, has acted on it uh, or not. So my preference would be to have a bad request there. All right, thanks. And the second point, perhaps a bit less controversial is uh, it might happen that right when the request comes, uh, the KDC, for several reasons, uh, is not able to, to produce and provide a, a new uh, sender ID or, or, or whatever new individual uh, identifier to the node. That seems pretty obvious instead to return a 503 error. Does that sound reasonable? or a more fine-grained error is more appropriate? Yeah, that de depends a lot on how you expect implementations, or client implementations, uh, to act on this. I mean, service unavailable can be anything. So 
if you get that code, you don't really know whether this is just out of, of uh, key material or something else bad has happened. Uh, okay, this is really specific to the put request, which is exactly about requesting uh, a new uh, individual uh, key information, uh, if that helps. Otherwise, uh, yeah, Maybe we I should define know. an optional um, diagnostic payload to include with that error. Oh, actually, not diagnostic it, payload, but but actual action yeah, payload. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I think that the expected payload in the five zero three is uh, after how long the client uh, is supposed to get back uh, to the server for five zero three. So it's a bit tricky. <laughs> But we'll look again for other error codes. If you see anything more appropriate than this, then. So essentially, we, we could uh, simply define the uh, problem uh, payload. Uh, so like, like we have uh, problem payloads for, for other kinds of problems. And that could include the information when, when it might be opportune to try again. Hmm. You're talking especially about the problem details document in core now? Or? Well, it, it would be related to the problem details document. That doesn't okay. mean that it has to use that. It could do its own thing. But of course, it would be nice if, if uh, they, they would be culturally compatible. Right. Yeah, it's good. OK. Uh, just to say we are running out of time, I think. So I, I suppose you want me to stop here. <laughs> um, I mean, actually, I was thinking, um, is that okay for, I mean, I, I, it depends on the people. Um, we can continue a little bit to find to finish this um, this presentation. We are almost um, done, by the way. With, with sorry? This one. We are almost done, by the way. Yeah. This. Oh, okay. So, and... Um, and then, so it's not too bad that we focus on this document uh, um, as opposed to the admin one um, for for this time. So I, I think that's fine if we can get the the updates and uh, move. I mean, get get the focus on one document. It's not too bad, also. So yeah, I, I, after we finish with this document, we might um, adjourn the meeting. Okay. Uh, next then, yeah. Um, right, uh, th there's another resource, uh, this is common for the group instead, uh, pubkey. Um, you can send requests to get public keys of other group members. And other than the, the get method, we, we also describe how the, the, the fetch method can work here, where you can indicate um, a subset of public keys you are interested in, uh, filtering by uh, IDs of group members or roles of those group members. So on top, you have uh, the current format for the, for the fetch payload uh, describing the filter, uh, in fact. Uh, we, we, we thought it would be useful to enable uh, um, also the, the reverse direction of, of the filter with respect to the IDs of the group members indicated. And that would mean indicating, uh, sorry, having one more uh, Boolean parameter in the payload of fetch. And there's an example with more discussion in the uh, next slide. So basically, the idea is that uh, if the flag is set to true, it works uh, as of now. Uh, when you see a number of IDs uh, in the IDs filter uh, internal array, you want the public keys of the group members uh, having those IDs. Uh, so you are essentially asserting what you want uh, considering the filter. But if the flag is false, uh, we can revert this rule so that uh, you want the public keys uh, except for the group members with the specified IDs in the filter. Uh, and that can be useful, for instance, for a group member that uh, has been in the group for a while. Uh, more members have joined, and the group member might have missed a few public keys of new group members, but it has a bunch of keys already, and they would like to send a fetch request with uh, a negative ID filter, so specifying the IDs of the public keys it has already, 
asking us for, for all possible other public keys that uh, have been added in the meanwhile and it doesn't have yet. Does this make sense to include? Because the only way to get public keys of, of nodes you don't know they have joined already is just about asking for, well, the full set um, with with, uh, with a get or, or with an empty ID filter then. And then, of course, you'd get all keys currently present. Uh, but maybe you don't want to get, again, the ones you already have for sure. Any comment on this? Makes sense to me. Okay. Yeah, me too. Great. And we'll add it. Uh, next, please. Uh, right. This is just to um, to have more feedback just in case we, we are misunderstanding anything here. And, and this is probably uh, all text that remain from previous version that doesn't sound uh, right anymore. Um, it was mentioned in that uh, upon receiving a delete request to a node sub resource, for a node wanting to leave the group, uh, the KDC was in fact supposed that this request was consistent with the roles of that group member, but actually the roles uh, don't really play any role in the, the ability legitimacy uh, of a group member to leave the group. That, that's something that should be always possible in fact. So uh, uh, unless we, we forgot something or we are not seeing something we, we meant <laughs> some time ago, it should be just about deleting this this text about the, the delete operation. You can always check in, but you can never leave. <laughs> I mean, I suppose we don't want that. Uh, anyone should be able to, to leave the group. And it's just a favor to the KDC in terms of uh, material to keep around and manage after all. <laughs> OK, so we, we'll just remove the text. And, and that comes back in another paragraph later on. but. OK, thank you. So is the alternative that we, we, we so, someone can never leave, or? Yeah, it, it would make sense if you really want to um, forbid a node to leave based on its roles. But I mean, that node at the end of the day can, can still just forget about the group altogether and practically leave anyway. So I, I don't see mm. what can really add or, or help. So. <laughs> OK, then we can okay. just clean this text up. Uh, so do you intend to remove the text or to? Uh, yeah, the idea was to remove it unless we were really uh, not seeing any possible reason to keep it. OK. Yeah. Um, right. Uh, this should be the, the last big one. Um, Following the joining request, uh, the join response include, if requested, uh, public keys of the group members. And they can also be specified uh, as a response to the pub key sub resource. Uh, now, we are uh, also considering uh, COSI keys, especially as exact uh, encoding for public keys. And we are saying that in that case, uh, the KID parameter of the COSI key must be present and include uh, uh, a valid identifier for that group member that is responsibility of the specific profile to define. Uh, in particular, in the, in the group of score case, uh, that KD field takes as value the, the sender ID uh, that the node has in the group. Uh, but thinking more generally, of course, well, you may have one day uh, alternative encoding than, than code the keys. We are actually already uh, admitting this uh, and ways to signal it. Uh, okay, but then um, you need to be ready to, to have an encoding of public keys where there's no equivalent internal field to indicate uh, something like KID. And, but you still need that information to be, uh, to be provided. So it has to be in the actual uh, messages exchanged between the, the KDC uh, and the joining nodes or, or the group members. Um, so we thought of possibly introducing one more uh, optional parameter, uh, essentially in the join response and in the response to the uh, from the pub key resource. Uh, parameter uh, would be used, uh, 
uh, in case the, the public keys are requested and the used encoding is such that uh, the key doesn't include any um, embedded indication uh, of identifier. Uh, and this new peer identifiers parameter would be essentially analogous to the uh, peer roles parameter we, we have already um, explicitly indicated, indicating the roles uh, of the members in the group. Opinions, objections? And this is all for the sake of extensibility, of course, because in practical cases, in practical implementations, we are definitely considering cozy keys, but it's for possible future extensibility. No objections? Well, it, it's worth adding it. And we'll see if objections come later. Okay, uh, if I'm not wrong, the last one uh, was really about minor editorial things in, in case anyone had a comment. Uh, yeah, it's about renaming one parameter that is really about a URI, so it should be named control URI, not control path. Mm. And it was trying to avoid uh, my blame, uh, absolutely, uh, use and abuse of uh, expressions like those uh, that we can definitely uh, remove. So avoid using groups, set of groups. Oh, okay, so yeah, uh, a compact way of expressing singular and plural and, and like groups and hmm. set groups at, at the same time in a compact way. Uh, okay, but it's it's editorial. Okay, so looks good. Um, yeah, so as I mentioned, I think it's uh, it's it's good to to get focus on that one and um, I. My impression is that we can move this one and then um, consider um, uh, either the OS core profile, uh, no, not um, the OS core GM admin um, in a second um, in a second term. Uh, the first term being uh, the group com draft and then the the admin because that's going to be the same person working on those or the same set. So. Um, at some time, um, I think at that point where we are, and uh, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to be wrong, but my understanding is that um, it's possible that we get focus on one and then the other rather than having those two parallel drafts. Um, a small final comment, ASCII group com or score uh, is pretty stable and it will mostly be about updating it uh, to reflect the updates we do in this document. Instead okay. Of consistency, yeah. Okay. Uh, but is, is that the same with the GM admin? No, that, that's, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. that's a relatively new document and requires actual work on new features. Okay, yeah, yeah. But so what I, I suggest is that uh, for the time being, we really focus on this uh, key group com draft. So the two of those, mm -hmm. uh, the OS core and this one, and then we focus on the admin um, one. Sounds good. Okay, so I'm expecting to see um, a new version being published uh, quite soon and uh, hopefully um, I mean, uh, no other issues. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> OK, so thank you, everyone. I think we, we may stop um, this meeting. And thank you for attending. Uh, I think thank you for participating. We made good progress, I, I think. Um, and um, again, Happy New Year, and see you next time on the mailing list. Thank you very much. Bye. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.